All right, guys, welcome to this demo of LVCV3. A little bit of a mouthful there. I'm just going to be um, doing this off the cuff, so apologize for any interruptions, any flip ups, any um, stuttering, anything like that. Sorry about that. But uh, this script is massive, so I really don't have the time to write a whole script on how I'm going to demo this and explain all this. But let's jump into the first and biggest feature of LVC, and that is the expansion of the number of siren tones available to you guys by them. If you've ever used Siren Mastery, it's something similar to that. Um, it enables those additional siren tones that um, are used for Sheriff, FIB, Highway Patrol Bike, etc. into 5M. So if we look at this table at the top in the sirens.lua, this is included with um, LVC, we can kind of ignore this little column here. The left side is going to be our siren ID. The middle is a string that actually you you pass to a native to a function in, in GTA and it'll play that sound for you. And the right is going to be the specific wave file. So you might be familiar with these three here at least, or these four, excuse me. But now we're expanding all the different sirens to these different wave files. Here, so boom. Now that we've gone over that, let's look at the specific sirens table. So this table contains every single siren tone available to LVC. Um, it gives it a name, a string that it needs to point to, and a reference to what audio bank it would it needs to use. In this demo, I'm going to be utilizing WM Server Sirens, which is a third-party modification resource uh, by Alshi Modifications. And um, I'm not going to be a I'm not affiliated in any way, but um, it's just something that allows me to add some additional functionality to integrate with LVC. But we'll get into that. If you take a look on the left hand side, we've got a series of numbers here. So this is actually going to be the siren IDs that we're going to use later to assign them to vehicles. In this demo, we're running three LV LEO departments with um, an air horn and four different siren tones. So the first is going to be the 295, Federal Signal 2000, and Touchmaster Delta. And the Touchmaster Delta is going to be on the WM Server Siren. We've got our fire and some empty sirens. Not going to be. Now we can move down to the siren assignments table. This is where you're going to tell LVC what sirens belong to who. You can have 10 sirens to a car. You can have an theoretically an unlimited number of sirens to a car. Um, you could have three sirens only. So that is where we're going to actually tell LVC which one of these sirens needs to go on which car. And we do that using the game name. I have an example vehicle meta here open. So you'll notice that the game name is different than a mo the model name. So just keep that in mind. The game name is typically called the display name. Um, it, I do not believe it's utilized um, a lot of places in 5M, but um, that's how we dereference it. It's, it's a lot easier doing it this way. You can place any um, name you would like here. It could just be PD. It could be PD4 if you want to do custom sirens per individual vehicle. You could do um, anything. As long as it is unique to the first 11 characters and, de and you know, between your different packs. So um, I have a lot of information on the wiki about that. But first thing to remember, game name. We'll place a game name between some quotes here, and we have we're using looking at the Cambridge car there. The first number in this table identifies what air horn to use. So, for the LAD, LAPD car, we're using ID one, so it's going to point here and say play this tone. For the Cambridge cars, we're using ID six, so on and so forth. After that is the specific siren tones. So for the LAPD, we're using two nine, the Wayland 295, Well, Yelp, uh, Piercer, and Hetero, um, so on and so forth. So now that you understand, kind of, hopefully, that, uh, that explains a little bit of the sirens.lua and set this up. Let's take a listen. In here. So I'm in here in our pinbook pine skins that I made. Um, this is just for demonstration purposes, but let's take a listen.
we open up the menu, we'll see TMD, which is Touchmaster Delta. If we look at our storage management, it's actually going to tell us which profile we're looking at, and it is Pembroke, so we know that it's loading in the correct tones here. So that was 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 being a custom sweep tone that I made um, using Audacity. So you can put you know, whatever tone that you would like in here, as long as it meets that size requirement for the resonant RPF. But yeah, Touchmaster Delta there, our first apartment. Let's take a listen to Cambridge. Obvious difference in the in the siren tone there. And on this one, on the fourth one, we've got a rumbler. Take a look. We've got FS, so that's Federal s uh, Signal. And Cambridge on our profile. Which means it's loaded in correctly. We look over here on our LAPD. This one we've got the Hetro, the 295 Hetro. So there you can see 295 and our LAPD profile. So those names that we just saw in the script were loaded in from here. And these are the profile names that we were looking at just a second ago. So boom, there you go. That covers basically the primary function of LVC is assigning those. Um, the other features are really nice, but not necessary. So that allows you to assign sirens to different departments, to different vehicle or display names, for example. Let's talk about the menu in game. Our first menu option is the main siren settings, which allows you to determine if you like air horn interrupt mode, reset to standby, and when you want those sirens to play, if it is on cycle through the sirens or on demand button only or disabled completely. So let's listen to air horn interrupt mode. So by default, air horn interrupt mode is enabled. Um, that just determines if your siren plays over or is interrupted by your air horn. Reset to standby determines if your siren will reset to the first position on um, toggle. So as you can hear here, when I'm toggling on and off, it remains in that second position, that Yelp tone. We reset to standby though. It'll go back to that first whale. Inside our, um, here we can rename tones if we so desire. We can also determine how they're played. Big example for this is the hetero. It's a very aggressive tone. It's not really something that we're gonna use a lot out and out on patrol. So we can assign this to, or we can set this to button only, which means now when I cycle through my siren, it actually won't play that tone. And it's only gonna play it when I hit the on-demand registered key, so. If I set it to cycle only, now you'll notice our on-demand key that does not do anything. It's back into the cycle. We can also disable that siren tone altogether if we so do. We can change our primary manual tone. Our secondary manual tone. Or our auxiliary tone. So that's pretty interesting. You can run dual Yelp if you'd like. Just some additional customization that you can have there. Siren Park Kill is what it sounds like. Whenever your vehicle is placed in park, whenever you exit the vehicle, the siren will turn off. So this allows you to focus at the situation at hand. You're not going to be um, fumbling with your siren whenever you're jumping out of your car termination of a pursuit or something like that. 
We look at the head settings. So we have the ability to toggle the HUD, move the HUD around, change the scale, determine if the backlight textures are enabled. So auto means it's based on your headlight position, or we can have it always off. Or we reset will reset the position if you change your resolution and for some reason it's off your screen. Reset should bring it back onto screen. We can look at the audio settings. So for this, um, we have the ability to enable and disable radio controls using the tilde key or back quote. So if I hold the key left of the one on the num row, boom, now we have a radio wheel enabled on our emergency vehicle. I can disable that feature. I can change what uh, um, sound effect scheme um, is actually going to be used whenever we toggle. Toggle our stuff. Um, I can also enable and disable manual and air horn button clicks for that. So, as you can hear, those those button clicks are played. If I turn that off, that's not in there. I can I can have an activity reminder. So, an activity reminder is built into siren boxes in real life. Um, some are enabled by some departments to remind officers that their lights are on if their manual, their horn, or their siren has not been touched recently. So uh, there's a timer at the bottom right above the HUD, and we'll hear that sound just in a second. Take a listen. So it's a little beep beep. It just reminds you that your lights are on, a little bit of added realism. You can adjust how long that takes. So here it is half a minute, a minute, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. We're completely off. So. Um, if you want that activity reminder disabled. You can change how um, loud those sound effects are. We look at our upgrade volume, for example. And adjust the sound there. Plugins menu contains additional plugins installed by the server developer that can expand functionality of Luxart Vehicle Control. We'll look at that just in a minute. In the storage management, we can save our settings, load settings, copy settings from a different profile, factor reset, or just reset our settings rarely. So if we reset our settings and we look here, we have siren part kill disabled. Our manual and auxiliary tones are all default. Go ahead and load these in. And it's back in eight custom tone set up. So we don't have to go through here and adjust this every single time. It automatically will do this whenever you enter a vehicle that you have a safe profile. So you don't even have to load it every single time. As soon as you get in a vehicle, next time you relaunch your game, boom, it's automatically for you. So that's a convenient factor for you. All right, so now that we've covered the menu primarily, let's discuss some of the additional functionality plugins can add to LVC if you so desire. Some of these plugins are experimental. They are not meant for uh, production use, but uh, primarily beta testing and highlighting some of the future features LVC will provide. That being said, let's demonstrate some of those. In this, we're going to be using um, Thero or Thero's um, LAPD California pack. It can be found in the description below. Um, but this is some of the functionality that I have programmed in for it. So this vehicle has custom extra set up to toggle some light stages. And so using LVC, we can actually toggle those light stages without having to go into V menu. So I'll go over some of those. So eight, you see the light bars turning off there. You've got the back ambers and um, on scene mode. You've got a traffic advisor. So as you can see, these extras are already created by the developer. LVC cannot just work, do this functionality on any old vehicle. It does need to be designed. So let's take a look. Using our traffic advisor plugin, when our vehicle's in stage three, 
if I hold down what keys I have signed, which is going to be shift and left arrow, you'll notice we have our left traffic advisor on. Right traffic advisor, if I hit my right arrow. If I hit down, I'll have my center out traffic advisor. So that's the traffic advisor plugin. Allows you to toggle extras for traffic advisors. I recommend for vehicle developers to put light meshes under the extras and not actual, um, not actually the whole light bar because that will require you to repair the vehicle. Now let's look at um, another plugin that I have, which is going to be the takedown plugin. This allows you to draw a spotlight in front of your vehicle. Let's you to draw a spotlight in front of your vehicle using um, GTA 5's functions. Um, and <coughs> with that, a brighter area can be illuminated pitch black. So this allows you, regardless if your headlight high beams stay on or off, this will light up an area there too. And I can go into the settings. And adjust what the intensity of this is and how far it goes based on my EMB preference. I can also determine if I would like integration. So right now I have takedown set high beams. But I could also have the high beams toggled to actual takedowns when I I can turn that completely off as well. I can also adjust what positions it is. So if I have a vehicle with different dimensions, maybe I need to use a different takedown preference for this one. I'd probably use something like this. Now let's talk about extra integrations. So extra integrations is a plugin which toggles extra based on the vehicle's state and other LVC states. So for example, I have a extra integration setting for takedowns. So that being said, whenever my takedowns are on, it's going to toggle an extra below that um, light bar, the red blues below the light bar. So you can see that there. That's pretty cool. I can also have it toggle on air horns, so. though. Pretty nice. But some additional functionality like whale in command or sound off um, blueprint. I could have um, brake light indicators, reverse light indicators in my light bar that are actually toggled automatically. So pretty interesting and a lot of functionality for you vehicle developers out there if you're looking for something to um, add some extra bonus to your vehicle, that would be something that's really cool to see. Let's talk about extra controls. This is a fairly basic um, plugin that allows you to toggle extras based on hotkey assignment. So I can go in here on scene. Let's do left control and left arrow. And now, whenever I hit control and left arrow, you'll notice my light bar switches from um, stage three to on scene mode. You'll see the flip on with it as well. Now we can turn our takedowns on, and boom, now we got a full front flood on scene, taking care of business. I can also set up a keybind for another extra set I, I've set up. So left control again, we'll do right arrow on this one. That's going to be for our passenger spotlight. So flip that down and up right on the fly. We don't even have to do anything, just flip a key. Turn our lights back on. No. Some other plugins, we have trailer support. We'll demo that just in a second. Um, but yeah, that's some of the future features that I hope to um, get out nice and stable for you guys. And yeah, I'm really excited about that. Let's take a look at trailer support. All right, so 
to demo our trailer support, I went ahead and spawned a um, pre-release fire truck um, from a developer. That is looking pretty sexy, but um, if uh, there is a link, I will provide it down below. Otherwise, you have to find your own tiller, unfortunately. But let's let's look take a look at the trailer um, support options menu. In here, I have already set up a settings profile for this vehicle so it's been detected here and we've loaded in some custom shortcuts basically this allows you to toggle extras on both the trailer and the cab simultaneously from push a button in the driver's seat so i can raise my ladder that's just toggling some extras there i can open my doors i can change extras on the cab or trailer I want to have a hydrant set up here. Or my um, station exhaust. Uh, I don't know what you'd call that. Preventer. So that's the trailer support. It automatically, LVC automatically will toggle the lights on the trailer, but this allows you to do some extra stuff with doors, shortcuts, toggling extras very quickly um, if you do so decide. All right, guys, so that pretty much wraps up um, my short demonstration or probably long demonstration of LVC V3. Um, I will be uploading this, but make sure to check out the wiki, keep up to date on the GitHub, and check out my Discord for feature support um, any additional stuff like that. So take care, guys.